I was down on my luck, down to my last buck when my agent called me up one night. He said, man, this job is easy. You just call some woman wheezy and you walk just like your pants are too tight. He said, huff, puff, strut your stuff. Man, you really gonna go far. Just walk around the kitchen like your jockey shorts are itching and you gonna be a great beast star like this. <laughs> you can call me George, you can call me Sharon, you can call me Deep to Dry. But don't you call me cousin because you were talking nothing, just a sucker with an alibi. Now, here's a little tip if you want to be hip and get an acting job on TV. Forget about Shakespeare just to catch your big red and learn to walk like me. Ow! Walk this way. Then you got to talk this way. Walk this way. Talk this way. Walk this way. And talk this way. Down the show, down the show, hey, hey, down the show. It's down the show. Hey, Ted. John, thank you for that insightful piece about sun salutations for low-income pets. Welcome to our annual pledge drive. I'm Mindy Grass Coyne, host of Seeing Things More Clearly, WXYZ's investigative call-in show. And I'm Garrett Keyholder, host of the Apple Butter Biscuit Old Timey Radio Hour, brought to you by Apple Butter Biscuits. The only thing better than apple bottoms are apple butter biscuits. Now, if you like the intelligent reporting, interviews, or even the paper shuffling between interviews, as you've heard, please remember to call into our pledge dr dr drive. Garrett, is that the sound of you purring? I, I am purring, Mindy. It's just because public radio is so cozy. And if you feel the same at home, we, we hope you'll consider pledging this year. In fact, we'd like to make a special appeal to listeners. And you could be an example of this, who couldn't start their mornings without us but may never have supported public radio before. That's right. For example, listener Ted Derrett has never donated money to public media before. That's right, Mindy. And it's a darn shame the depths we've had to sink to just to stay afloat, from low-impact phone harassment mm -hmm. to ransoming people's mail, and even replacing beloved shows like Car Chat with new urban youth-oriented programming like Wish a Mother f Would. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do right now is, uh, get back to listener Ted. It's just so darn disappointing. Oh, you're right, it is. Now, it's not like Ted Derrett doesn't have any extra money lying around. Just recently, Ted bought a new electric shaving kit, even though his old one is still in perfect working order. You know, he got that first one from his mother. No, I didn't know that. Uh, he also bought one of those newfangled shower shaving mirrors. Mm. It's supposed to be fog-free, but it isn't. No. It, it isn't fog-free, is it, Ted? You see, we can see in your shower. Now, Ted, we don't want to scare you, and we don't want to see inside your shower. What we're merely curious about is how our regular listeners, like yourself, are spending their money. That money that could have gone towards keeping our jobs here in public broadcast. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, keeping quality shows like Horse Bed and Laundry Talk and The White Dilemma on the air. It means not losing your constant radio companions, Ted. Or for that matter, not losing your brake lines. Let this serve as a warning. If you do not donate money to public media, we will follow you. <laughs> yes, that's right, Ted. Run. Run as fast as you can. We will find you. But first, the news. Paid for by the Republican National Committee Against the Arts or Anything Faggy. Uh, <laughs> it's true, I wasn't good at it, I fucking hated it. I went home with a chick one time who stopped at Wawa, and we were waiting to get a hoagie, and I was like, this is how you're gonna seduce me? And uh, she didn't care, she had like a little chubby fat hanging out of her stomach. Uh, and f*** her. So, uh, 
And the guy behind the counter is like, extra bacon, right? To her. And she was like, he knows me. I'm like, that's not impressive. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't even know your name. He said extra bacon. <laughs> that is the shittiest thing I've ever heard. And then you meet this girl and you take her home. and She's like, don't wake up my roommate. She's sleeping. You go to her fucking hoarder's bedroom. <laughs> Get that fucking knife fight at a hand job. Booty 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 shorts for men. Booty 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 shorts for men. Booty shorts for men. Booty introducing you booty shorts for men. Booty 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 shorts for men. Tell the world who you are and tell them with words written on your booty. Yeah. Booty shorts for men. Booty. Let the world know that you are proud to be who you is. And say it with your booty. On your booty is what you say it. Booty, booty, booty. Shorts for men. Booty. Shorts for men. Booty. They shorts for men. Booty, booty, booty. Shorts for men. Booty, booty, booty. Sorry, ladies. Shorts These booty shorts are hot. But they are for men only. Booty. Exclusive club, 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 shorts club gold. Booty. They shorts for men. Booty shorts for men are available at the mall and online at www.bootybootybooty.net. Dot net. Booty. The Washington Redskins is the most racist name in sports, second only to the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, really, who refers to Jews as Falcons anymore? <laughs> that was kind of funny. That was kind of funny. <laughs> I can't fathom why people would want to experiment with marijuana. Why don't they just smoke it like the rest of us? <laughs> Could you keep it down? I'm trying to read over here. What are we supposed to do with our keys, sir? I don't know. You can put them in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, must be nice to have some cushy job let you just slide your keys right on in your pocket, man. Oh, well, what is it you do? I got some auditions. I'm waiting on my manager to call me back. I paint houses for my mom's friends. Um, Here might be a reason why I do have autism because I met this nice girl. She gave me her phone number, and instead of asking her out, I decided to text her a fact of the War of 1812 <laughs> every day for a month. <laughs> Now, to say she was confused would be an understatement because she would text me questions, why are you doing this, please stop, and I just disregarded all of that and I committed to every day sending a fact of the War of 1812. And that's how every text ended, in the War of 1812. At first, I was looking up facts on the internet that got boring, so I just started making them up. Like, too bad jean shorts weren't invented in the War of 1812. Or... Occasionally, soldiers had boners in the War of 1812. And I also texted her one minute later than the previous day, uh, just in case she thought it was automated. <laughs> like, I submitted her phone number to a website that instead of sending a daily joke, just sent a daily fact of the War of 1812. So I just wanted to make sure she didn't know that. And some of you might say that this is harassment, but it's not. It's information. <laughs> information is power, and I empower this poor woman. <laughs> I've noticed another interesting trend, and that's uh, the higher the tattoo, the crazier the person. Okay, you see a guy with a tattoo on his ankle, all right, you got drunk on spring break one year. You see a guy with a tattoo on his neck, that guy's okay with never having a job that includes benefits. <laughs> 
he thinks a 401k is a type of machine gun. <laughs> and if you see a guy with a tattoo on his face, he hits his mom. <laughs> Sexy, naked, driver, guy. Shit. License of registration. You, uh... You mind telling me what happened back there? Well, uh... I was driving kind of fast, and uh, my shirt blew off. And I was driving pretty fast, and uh, my pants and underwear blew off. Then I was driving really fast, and the coffee table in my trunk that I didn't tie down blew out and killed eight people. So, uh, we doing this?